One of the recurrent questions that has been posed to me, and one question I've seen across the board on the internet, throughout YouTube, and just about everywhere, and in real life too, is the question of whether or not an individual should learn or study a language. Now that's actually a reasonable question, and I want to take my time and my experience in my wheelhouse, and this is, to a large extent, at least historically, has been my wheelhouse uh, language, to explore this issue and give some explanations. And the purpose of this video is to be largely educational, to take my life experience, explain certain things and propositions, and at the end of it, hopefully, you will come off uh, better, at least, a little bit more educated on this matter, because I think there are pros and cons, and it is complicated. Now, before I go into the two subsections of this video, and the first subsection would be learning language for economic reasons, which is separate from the other reasons I want to go into, Let's give a little bit of information about my background in case you're new here. I do have a background in language, although that's not how it first started. My original academic interest was late antiquity and the early Middle Ages, specifically European history, uh, early Middle Ages, late antiquity of Europe. And I wanted to become a historian. And at the time, my professor, who himself had been a professor of ancient history, said, well, look, if you want to become a historian, you're going to have to at least learn to read German and French. And as it turned out, if you want to cover any period of history in the West, you're going to have to at least learn to read German or French, and if not learn the languages outright, because of so much important scholarship that's been written in these languages, in addition to English. And in some cases, depending on the context, if you're a Renaissance scholar, you would need to acquire some knowledge of Italian too. And that was sort of the impetus for me to acquire learning languages. There were some others. My general desire to understand the Western tradition, hence why I studied Latin, among other things. But from there, I kind of monkey branched, uh, no pun intended, uh, from a purely historical concern and a sense that I had to pursue language as a prerequisite to the main thrust of what I had envisioned my profession to be in the future, uh, to a more pure, if you will, interest in language as I became very interested in the workings of language and I got more and more into philology, the study of language and texts, from which point I departed more and more into Germanic philology, the study of the Germanic languages. And eventually from there, I moved into theoretical linguistics, albeit briefly. After not moving into academia, I decided to teach foreign language for a fair while. And eventually after that, I worked for a fair while in the so-called translation industry. And so I have a, a decent amount of knowledge accumulated from all of these experiences. And I want to give you the sort of raw deal take on studying or learning language, first from the economic viability perspective, utilitarian perspective, if you wish to call it that. And then we can go into the reasons outside of that. And there are many reasons on that end of things. But a lot of people think, for example, that studying or learning a language is an economically viable thing, or it will add to your ability to earn money. And I would say that's largely not true. There are a few exceptions. For example, if there's a specific requirement, as increasingly there is in the United States, for people who are at the very least reasonably proficient or fluent in Spanish, and it's stated in, in a job form that you would only be accepted if you speak Spanish or it would be beneficial, then it's fairly obvious that, yes, in this case, learning Spanish would be beneficial if you don't already know it. But for the most part, learning languages is not a a meal ticket. It's not a ticket to making money, quite the opposite. And there are, are several reasons for this. The first reason is that learning language by itself is almost never a way to earn money. It's usually, in the best case scenario, an accoutrement or something ancillary that can be slapped onto some other activity. And so, for example, if you're engaged in business or finance, having at least some nominal knowledge of a foreign language is beneficial. But again, it's not the language itself that really matters or counts. 
And as far as activities that require direct or intense or knowledge of language or mastery, these activities tend to yield diminishing returns. The translation industry is over time uh, vanishing or dwindling, and this is in part due to machine translation. And I suspect the next 20 or 30 years it could almost completely be supplanted, with a few exceptions. And it's not very well remunerated, and it's also not very well justified in terms of the time expenditure. Translation involves, depending on the, the text, the format, the context, etc., a lot of time investment, even if you do know the language as well that you're working with, for very little payout in the end. Historically, that's been the case. And a lot of demands put on you. And so that isn't really a, a great option. It's a lot of work for very little recompense, and who really wants to do that? I think translation, unless you're desperate, is not the way to go. But that's one way in which you could say direct knowledge of language could be profitable. Profitable, yes, in the sense that you, know, you can make some money, but it's not good money. Then there's the prospect of teaching foreign languages, which I've done a fair bit. And that is also not very profitable. And more to the point, it can be extremely annoying because the teaching industry in general, but specifically the foreign language teaching industry, be it English, German, whatever, carries with it a set of expectations that you're not meant to actually teach the content, but rather endow the students, be they adults or children, or somewhere in between, with the sense and feeling of accomplishment. And that sense, feeling of accomplishment, can sometimes be coupled to uh, actual learning of the material in question, but oftentimes it's not, and it's your job as the funny monkey giving them language lessons to give them that sense of achievement and accomplishment so that they become repeat customers, as it were. And that is not something I could heartily recommend. It wasn't fun, and it seemed, at the time at least, to defy the principles by which I had acquired learned languages and the teachers that I had who imparted, I think, uh, wise and knowledgeable lessons in how we go about studying and acquiring language. So, again, two areas which directly have something to do with language and yet are not very profitable and, and really not worth the headache. The final area that has a direct relationship to language is pretty profitable, but it is immensely difficult and challenging. That is interpretation. A lot of people don't know the distinction between interpretation and translation. Suffice to say, all translation is a type of interpretation, and all interpretation is a type of translation. But that's where the similarities start and end. Interpretation, strictly speaking, is when you're actively and instantly translating word for word, sentence for sentence, more or less, what you are receiving for the sake of an audience. So for example, if you're at the UN and Vladimir Putin is there and they need a Russian English interpreter or vice versa, English Russian interpreter, that will be your job to interpret there and you will be well paid for that. Uh, likewise, within the EU, a lot of these government bureaucracies as well pay, but you can also be paid privately quite well. Interpretation is exceptionally demanding, cognitively, physiologically. It involves so much work, so much mind play, and so much body play because it's, it requires every second of your attention, and you cannot fail. Unless you have that mental and physical constitution, you're probably not going to make it. I could never be interpreter. I know I can't or could not have. I simply lack that minute-to-minute -minute ability to pay attention to everything and to never relent. But that is a profitable avenue if you're studying language. Uh, it's just very, very difficult, and the vast, vast majority of people simply cannot do it because they lack the talent, myself included. And apart from that, there is no real way of, quote-unquote, making money with language. It's largely a dead-end endeavor. And some of these reasons are pretty obvious. These days, English is king. And yes, for the most part, this video is meant or designed for monoglot speakers of English. If you're not a native speaker of English, but you've not yet uh, acquired substantial English, then in which case, of course, you wouldn't understand what I'm saying now, I would heartily recommend you to do so because it's so beneficial if you're not a native speaker. Once you learn English, the world opens up to you. It is, for better or worse, the lingua franca of our world. But generally speaking, you would be better served economically in terms of utility by acquiring other skills and learning other things apart from language. 
if you learned how to weld, it would be far more useful. If you learned how to become a plumber, it would be far more useful. Language does not really have economic viability utility, increasingly because of things like automated translation and also because of low demand in general. Uh, foreign language teachers might always be in some kind of limbo demand, but it's just really not there too much. And it's not a fun job. It's not very rewarding. Uh, translation's going slowly but surely out the window. And the vast, vast majority of us don't have what it takes to be interpreters. So there you have it. Now, those are economic reasons. And like I said, if you wish to juxtapose uh, language skills to something else, be it engineering or business or whatever, more power to you. The final exception is one I mentioned earlier. If you want to get involved in academia, specifically in humanities revolving around European civilization or history, you probably would at the very least need to read German or French just because historically so much scholarship has been produced in those languages and continues to be produced in those languages, albeit not in the same quantity as the days of yore with the ascension of English. But, but nonetheless, if you are looking to study or learn language from a financial perspective, thinking that it might give you a leg up, you're probably wrong, and it's probably a waste of time, and your time would probably be better spent elsewhere. With that said, given how few financial reasons there are to study or learn language, uh, there can be many reasons otherwise. I think language, and this is my own personal opinion, is something best studied, acquired, or learned, however you want to put it, in the context of your free time, in the context of your interest. A, because as I said prior, the economic opportunities are so few and far between, uh, and B, it'll probably make you more motivated to actually learn it. With that said, it's a very niche interest. Most people are not interested in language and certainly not the inner workings of language, just as most people are not interested in the inner workings and the physics of a mobile phone. It's all relative in that sense. But if you have a passing interest in language, you can move with that. But then there's the question in general in language study, independent of the economic stuff, we're talking free time here, how much time do you really want to invest? Because in many ways, the study of a foreign language can be, doesn't have to be, but can be an all or nothing investment. If you really want the sense of accomplishment of having achieved something, of having gotten somewhere with your studies, that would imply that you have to push your language acquisition skills really, really far. And consequently, you would have to invest a lot of time and energy and probably money in doing so because the return on investment, time investment here, study investment, would be pretty minimal if you didn't spend enough time because depending on how difficult the language is, you might not feel that you really have progressed very much. And so that's really the critical question, I think, in studying language. Unless it just doesn't bother you at all that you only can speak a smattering of a few words or a couple of sentences, and you don't have a clue about the grammar or how to pronounce things, fine. In most cases, people are concerned about that if they're trying to study a language, in which case the time investment is a huge issue. Because even people who are gifted to truly acquire a language well need to spend a tremendous amount of time doing so. It doesn't come overnight, at least not as an adult, and even as a child, it doesn't. It takes a while. So language study or acquisition, even if you have the right reasons, that is non-economic reasons, well, it is a tremendous investment of time. And then you might want to ask yourself if that time is not better spent doing other things that bring you enjoyment, such as building model airplanes, or playing golf or tennis, or going for jogs, or playing video games, or whatever. There is the argument, I suppose, of knowledge for knowledge's sake. And in a former time in my life, I might have offered that argument, but I'm too cynical and too old to actually recommend studying language for the sake of language. People have different interests and people have different proclivities. So if you do wish to walk the path of studying a language, you need to be aware of the fact that if you actually want to achieve a, a decent mastery or a decent level of competence, you're going to spend a lot of time doing it. And whether or not you want to invest that time is ultimately up to you. But the fun thing about studying a language uncoupled to economic reasons is the practicality and the pragmatism behind it kind of uh, goes out the window. You don't really need to think too much about whether or not it's practical or pragmatic to study Icelandic or Welsh or Estonian 
or Mongolian, if you have an interest in it, you can just do it because if you have the free time to allocate to it, you can do so. But again, which language you choose to study, that's completely up to you. It'd be a cultural interest. Maybe you have a profound interest in in the Renaissance and you think, well, what if I studied Italian? That would really help me gain a greater grasp of the events of the Renaissance. I could maybe read some of the literature directly, although half of it's in Latin in that case, etc., etc. So it's always good to think about the reasons as to why you want to study a language and what your motivations are. But I think the biggest takeaway from this video should be that if you're studying a language, it's best to study it for non-economic reasons, unless it's explicitly stated in some job application you think that job is within reach. Uh, and even if you are going to study a language independent of economic factors, it probably will be a waste of time because you're probably not going to be able to or even want to invest the time and energy in actually acquiring the language. Because there are all kinds of factors uh, people don't take into account. For example, learning a foreign language can be a very painful and embarrassing experience. It's effectively akin to being reduced to being a child and making constant mistakes and at least to the lights of the people observing you who are native speakers looking like a fool. And so if you don't want to suffer that, uh, if you don't want to suffer yourself looking like a fool, you might want to evade that by avoiding it entirely. Uh, I myself don't really have that issue because I just know it's part of the process. It is what it is, but still, that's something that bothers a lot of people and holds people back. The fear of making mistakes and looking like a like a, effectively a moron. And in the eyes and the ears of the people around you who are native speakers, that's what you'd probably sound like. And that's what you do at times sound like. Although there is obviously a more sophisticated way of viewing these things. The common person wouldn't view it as such. So I think in general, it's not worth it for most people to study or learn foreign languages unless you just have this obsession or passion or interest that just pushes you forward and makes you want to really jump into it. And if you have that, then more power to you. That's great. But again, time investment, difficulty, all of these things, it takes a really, really long time. Even for quote-unquote easy languages such as Spanish, it would still take you a pretty long time to gain an acute mastery or a very, very high level of competence if you've never studied a foreign language before, uh, simply in terms of vocabulary, grammar, etc., etc. I think people underestimate the amount of things you actually need to understand in order to be a productive speaker and listener of a language, and it's not thought about very often. So the ultimate takeaway from this video is, in general, probably, you're wasting your time if you're studying a foreign language it probably is not worth your time unless you have a specific interest that you're trying to achieve. Maybe you have a freak interest in Mongolian, and well, in that case, more power to you. But as a rule, I don't think it's worth it for most people to learn a foreign language. With the exception of non-native speakers of English, I think it's very beneficial and would behoove them to study a foreign language. Anyway, I wanted to offer my two cents on something I know a little bit about. Uh, I'd like to make more of these types of videos in the future. Uh, one question I get asked often is, how do I best go about learning a language? And that is uh, very individual. But if the interest is sufficient, I could make a video about that as well. I just didn't want to move too far beyond the boundaries of this particular video. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. And if I'm still alive, more content to come. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.